not so very long ago, oh, very far away. One of our friends on the Discord, the IDC Discord channel, asked me if I had used Prismacolor Scholar water-based markers. Now, really, they thought these were the same as these. These are alcohol-based markers. These are water-based markers. I know, you see the prism color, you see the marker, you see the brush tip, you're like, ah, oh, okay. They're like a smaller version, a single-sided version of these. They are not, they are not. Um, yes, I have used these. Um, unfortunately, the review I'd written for these got lost. And so I'm going to do a really quick review slash demonstration of these. Since they are water-based and brush tip, this means there's a lot of competition on the market. So don't let the Prismacolor name fool you. Prismacolor got bought out by Rubbermaid. So they're in the same category as like Crayola, at least in terms of their, their scholar line, in my personal opinion. Your, your knowledge may vary, you may have a different experience. These are single-sided markers. They are water-based. They have a brush tip. Their brush tip, I want to say it's fiber, but I might be wrong about that. The brush tip on regular Prismacolors is made of foam rubber, and it's very durable. But as I'm looking at it, it looks like the brush tip on Scholars might actually be foam rubber too. We'll find out in one second. Can't tell, but it's a decent brush tip. Whatever it is, it's decent. And let's do a little light reading. Prismacolor Scholar, water-based, low order ink. Ideal for building self-expression skills, journaling, idea development, rendering, and mixed media. Flexible brush tip to create thick, thin, or varied lines in one stroke. Dip brush tip in water before using to create a subtle wash. Available in 20 bright, vivid hues. I've honestly never seen the bigger pack and I've never seen these open stock, but I've also only checked on like Dick Blick. I can look that up and link the 20 pack if I can find it in the description below, but I've never seen the bigger one. Uh, available in combination with other, oh, use in combination with other Prismacolor Scholar products. AP non-toxic. So this is the 10 color set. You get yellow, a green, a pink, a blue, no two blues, purple, brown, a brown, <laughs> red, a gray, a black. So these are very bright primary colors. I'll zoom out for you guys a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and swatch all these colors, but I did want to no, I think, I think as I'm looking at it, the green one is, seems to be fiber. And fiber frays, it gets mushy over time. You can only do so much pressure with it before it, it gets ruined and it no longer does a very fine tip. As opposed to the foam rubber used in Prismacolor Premier, which never, I mean, you really have to abuse it for it to get mushy. And uh, it can take a lot of wear and tear. Blue. So honestly, in my opinion, they're not at all comparable. These are more on the same level as Crayola products. They're water-based. Water-based markers, especially at this level, tend to be dye-based. Only a max of 20 colors available. So it's really not a one-to-one -one comparison. Our brown is pretty anemic. What the heck? I swear, some of these have bigger brush tips than others too. And this was, yeah, yeah, that's a significantly bigger brush tip. What the heck? I bought these at the same time. These were from the same pack. So at least within my pack, there, this one also does, I, I still look at it, I'm like, that's still maybe foam. Whereas this is like obviously fiber. So, yeah, and then the green one looks like fiber, but it's small like the yellow one. There's variation within the pack. And I know that is a distinction that might not matter to everyone, but it is one that matters to me. That's red. Okay, no, that's pink. I guess that's pink. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of a darker pink. Now, one of the big selling points for Prismacolor, for any alcohol marker, but we're gonna say Prismacolor Premier because we're doing Prismacolor Scholar right now, is that it's blendable. 
and you use an alcohol blender with these, or you can blend them marker to marker. This 10 pack doesn't come with a comparable water-based blender. You can probably use it like a Tombow ABT. Colorless blender or a Sakura Koi colorless blender. Any one of the literally dozens of other brands that offer brush tip water-based markers. It's not hard to find other brands that do this and for the same price or lower. So I still say, if you really wanna get your kids water-based markers to get them getting used to making nicer art, I would say go with Zig Art and Graphic Twin, Tombow ABT, or the Sakura Koi markers. All right, we're gonna do color to color blending, which is something you would be able to do with Prismacolor Premier markers. Another thing about water-based markers, and I've talked about this at length at, on natosoup.blogspot.com, is that water-based markers, because they're leaving, they're putting so much dampness, so much water on the paper, they tend to be very abrasive to weaker papers. I'm using a Fluid Easy Press, or Easy Block, cold press watercolor paper. This is a cellulose, AKA wood pulp watercolor paper. And it is definitely tough enough to take watercolor or water-based markers. And this is what I would recommend if you insist on using these markers or honestly any water-based markers, I would say go ahead, use a mixed media paper, use a watercolor paper. It's gonna to be tough enough to handle the markers that you're using. Otherwise the paper surface is gonna pill, it's gonna abrade, it's gonna to get torn up. It's gonna look like it got chewed up. And I've written about water-based markers in depth at natasoup.blogspot.com. So again, if you're looking for good water-based markers for a young artist or for yourself, maybe you can't deal with the fumes that alcohol markers have, you should definitely head over there and check out my water-based marker hub page. Have everything organized, including videos, so that you can just go through and find what you need really quickly. So water-based markers, when they blend, they tend to blend more like watercolors would blend. So you work the color back over and it's a very surface blending. Whereas alcohol markers, the alcohol solvent pushes the dye to the back of a paper. That's why alcohol uh, art, alcohol marker art tends to, um, and I'm actually looking for a specific example I just completed and I, don't have it at my finger taps, so I can't show you guys. But alcohol, oh wait, here is a, another alcohol illustration. Not the best art I've ever done, but you guys can see, you can very clearly see the image through the other side. With water-based markers, it really has to soak through the paper to do that. So they, they blend in completely different ways as well, which is why I say that water-based markers can have a place in your studio, even if, um, you're an illustrator and you don't necessarily think about water-based markers all that much because they're very different from alcohol-based markers. So I'm gonna use a water brush because I don't actually have my Tombow ABT blender brush handy and that would use glycerin and water to blend. So we're just using regular water here and I'm gonna use water to blend my colors into each other. And again, this would only really work well on a watercolor paper like what we're using here, the Fluid Easy Block. And you might have to go over it a few times if you really wanted like a perfect blend. Now, Chameleon has water-based uh, markers that have an infusing chamber like their Chameleon Color Tones markers. And I'm really curious how, I think it can be done. I'm just curious to see how Chameleon does it. And then you could let this dry and then go over it again. And I will go ahead and swatch out as much as I can. I know I worked kind of close on this, some of the other colors. So water-based markers like this tend to be dye-based. And dye, when it gets wet like this, will often separate out into the individual dyes that were used mixed to make up that particular color. The only pigment-based watercolor markers that I can that I know of um, are the Winsor and Newton water-based watercolor markers and those are aimed at you know more professional artists and you know they have things like cadmium red which may actually use cadmium if it's using the same pigment that that shade of paint is using so I would not recommend those 
over say i mean if you're not going to buy alcohol markers for your young artsy kid then i wouldn't say i wouldn't recommend you buy heavy metal laced water based watercolor markers either so anyway prismacolor scholars in my opinion not at all comparable to prismacolor career premieres don't handle the same aren't used the same the brush isn't even very flexible to be honest if you want to buy decent uh water-based markers crayola has a lot of brush tip markers out that are really not bad very similar to tombow abt markers and much less expensive so those are good um kuratake makes the art and graphic twin which has a foam brush water-based marker those are really 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 nice i really enjoy those they also make the clean color real brush markers and those are great too you can look up reviews for the tombow abt the Z both zig brands over at natasoup.blogspot.com but uh this was sort of a requested mini review so here we are mini reviewing it i hope you guys found this helpful i hope this answered your questions i will try and find the 20 pack i am not going to purchase the 20 pack but i'll try to find the 20 pack and see if it's got any better color selection and any skin tones and I will link that in the description below. So if you're also, if you're an artist who's interested in water-based markers, I didn't um, mention this, but Pitt, Faber-Castell makes Pitt pens and the Pitt, Pitt pen big brush markers, which you guys can look up here on this channel as well, use India ink and those are also great and they're archival. And they don't use a dye, they use colored India inks. So. Thank you guys so much for watching this mini demonstration of Prismacolor Scholar Markers. I hope you guys found it useful. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions and head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com for more information on water-based markers. Have a great day, guys. Bye.